Today's Chiefs Report is presented by True Classic Tees. I'm rocking one today. Nice and comfortable t-shirts for males of all sizes. And you can get 25% off when you go to trueclassictees.com slash chat and use promo code chat to get 25% off when you check out. That's trueclassictees.com slash chat, promo code chat. Welcome into the show. I am Harrison Graham. On today's video, we're going to go through my final Chiefs 53-man roster projection as the Chiefs currently sit at 75 players on the roster. I told you guys on Saturday about the initial cuts that the Chiefs made uh, following their preseason finale. 22 more cuts to go as they got to get to 53 by 3 o'clock Central Time tomorrow. These are the players that were cut on Saturday. Dustin Crum, the quarterback, Tayon Fleet Davis, Aaron Parker, the wide receiver, offensive tackle, Roderick Johnson, and then UDFA linebacker, Mike Rose. If you want more details, information about those players that got cut, go check out Saturday's video. It's on the video or the content tab here on the Chiefs Report. All right, before we get into my roster projection, let's go, baby. Who's ready for week one? Preseason's over. We don't care about that. Like the video if you're ready for the season opener against the Cardinals. Hit that thumbs up icon. Let's get 500 plus likes on today's show because if you're fired up about the season, like the video. All right, roster projection. I did it. Three quarterbacks make the team. I just think with Shane Bouchel, obviously Mahomes, I think Chad Henney's safe. I think Shane Bouchel did enough to deserve a roster spot. And more importantly, if he did get cut, I do think there's a good chance a team would poach him. We've talked about it. The Cardinals tried to pick him up last year. Uh, in the middle of the season. Chiefs had to elevate him, uh, and I think he showed enough progress in the preseason that I would keep him around. I've talked about it for a year plus now since they picked him up after last year's draft. I think he can be a long-term backup quarterback to Mahomes. Even if they think Henny's a better option this year, I think Bouchelle long-term can be that guy. thought he played really well in the preseason finale against the Packers. 11-17, 166 yards, couple of touchdowns. He looked poised. Uh, yeah, he's got a bit of a gunslinger's mentality. He'll put the ball in harm's way occasionally, but you'll live with that because he hits enough big plays. And I think stylistically, he's actually a pretty good backup to Mahomes just with the way he plays. So uh, I'd like to see that be the case. I'd like to see him make the team and quite frankly if you only keep two quarterbacks I would rather gamble and keep Shane Bouchel and cut Chad Henney but I've got all three making it so far all right uh running backs uh plus fullback of course three backs make it Clyde Edwards Alaire Jarrett McKinnon Isaiah Pacheco uh Michael Burton makes it as a fullback Derek Gore as you guys know will start on the pup list so uh, after week four, the Chiefs will have to make a decision to either uh, elevate him to the active 53 and cut someone else or uh, cut him and put him on the practice squad at that point. But that is uh, how I see running back playing out right now. Depth chart as follows. Edwards Alaire, RB1. McKinnon Pacheco, that's kind of interchangeable uh, as rotation backs, and then Burton as the fullback. Now, I thought about Ronald Jones. I, I, he made a push in the final preseason game, thought he ran well. I just don't see it. I didn't see enough consistent play, and I'd opt to go younger uh, with Pacheco, and I don't think you need a fourth running back. I just don't think it makes sense for Kansas City. So Ronald Jones gets caught. Maybe he could get traded here at the very last second uh, before tomorrow if a team needs a running back, but uh, don't know if that's going to be the case either. Don't think he makes the 53. What do you guys think? Will Ronald Jones make the Chiefs roster? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Derek Gore going on pup gives him a small chance, but uh, I still don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to type my N for no. All right, let's go receiver. Six guys. This has kind of been where I've been at for about two or three weeks now. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Sky Moore, McCole Hardman, Justin Watson. Those five are locks. I think Darius Fountain uh, locked himself a spot in the final preseason game. He's a special teams uh, player that can help there. And uh, he had a nice uh, uh, play up the left sideline uh, as well. I, I just think he's going to make it. And I think these are the six that make most sense. Because if you're wide receiver five or six, you got to contribute on special teams. And uh, Darius Fountain can do that. Some notable cuts here. Josh Gordon, Cornell Powell, and Corey Coleman. Uh, Powell and Co Coleman had their moments in the preseason. Gordon really did not, but he is a notable name, obviously. I think all three of those players get cut. I'd like to see Powell and Coleman especially return to the practice squad. Sure, if Gordon wants to as well as a vet, but he may look to try and sign elsewhere. Today's sponsor, True Classic Tees, like we told you. I'm rocking one today, and let me just tell you something. As a bigger guy in that big and tall category, when I shop and find shirts, 
it's all over the place. You know, extra large at one company doesn't mean the same as at a different company, but with True Classic, they have the best fitting men's t-shirts for guys of all sizes. Whether you got a six pack or you got a bit of a beer gut like I do, you're going to be looking good with True Classic. They have a polo line. They also have athletic shirts as well. You can also find some shorts with True Classic that are very comfortable. Cool thing about them also is you can buy in bulk. You can get like these six t-shirts here, these nine t-shirt packs for a very, very good deal. Less than $14 a tee if you go with the nine pack. It's awesome. Get 25% off when you check out at, uh, with promo code chat at trueclassictees.com slash chat, promo code chat as well. That link and promo code is in the comments and in the description. Get going with True Classic today. All right, let's keep it going here. Tight end, Travis Kelsey, Jody Fortson, Noah Gray, Blake Bell. If they haven't placed Bell on season-ending IR as of now, I think they're going to carry him through the initial 53. He did have hip surgery uh, the other day, but if they think he could return later in the season, I think they value him enough uh, to do that. So he'll make it initially. So these four guys uh, should all be good. Obviously, Kelsey, Fortson, and Gray are going to make it no matter what. I think Bell will as well, though. Then they'll put him on IR uh, after initial cuts. So he'll make the initial 53 once the Wednesday waiver wire passes. He'll be placed on IR, and then uh, the Chiefs will have a roster spot open up. And uh, stay tuned. Later in the video, I'll tell you who that player could be that could come back uh, to the Chiefs after initial cuts. I do want to mention, too, Matt Bushman made a strong push in the final preseason game. Maybe he comes back after initial cuts. I'm not predicting that, but I would like to see him be on the practice squad. So four tight ends make it initially, uh, and uh, we'll go from there after the Blake Bell situation. Offensive line, I've got nine players. Lucas Niang on the pop, so same deal as Derek Gore after week four. They'll have to make a decision on him. Uh, Orlando Brown, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, Andrew Wiley. Those are going to be your starters week one. Darian Kennard, Nick Allegretti, Jaron Christian, I think, makes it as a swing tackle. Uh, and then Austin Ryder is the backup center. I think those will be the nine that make it. And then Niang, if he's healthy, will get activated at some point down the road. Uh, pretty simple as you look at the depth chart here. We know the starters. Uh, Andrew Wiley, I think, is pretty comfortably going to be the right tackle, at least at the start of the year. Darian Kennard, not ready for that. Wiley's better than Christian. So I think uh, those nine make it. And then, uh, like I said, we'll see uh, when Lucas Niang is able to get healthy. Subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications because when the Chiefs' 53-man roster is finalized, we'll have a video. We decided not to go live today because information's changing every hour. Cuts are coming in, so no live show today, but we'll have more videos as news comes in, and especially on Tuesday when the 53-man roster is finalized. We'll have you covered, so subscribe and turn on that notification bell. All right, uh, 10 defensive linemen. Uh, Frank Clark, Chris Jones, Derek Nottie, George Karloftis, Carlos Dunlap, those are all locks. Michael Dana, he's a lock. Uh, beyond that, uh, Tershawn Wharton's a lock. I think Kalen Saunders is a lock. Kando firmly on the bubble as an edge there. Danny Shelton could be on the bubble. He could be a guy to cut initially, then bring back uh, since he is a vet. Uh, but I think he'll make the initial 53. Taylor Stallworth I cut, but he could be a, a guy that returns or a trade candidate potentially. He could also make the team. He did some good things in preseason. I just think Kalen Saunders impressed. I think he played a lot better than the Chiefs uh, expected as he's been quiet through the first three years of his career, but he did enough to secure a roster spot. We'll see if the same is true for Joshua Kando. Had a good game against the Packers. That gives him a chance. Who will lead the Chiefs in sacks this year? Will it be Chris Jones? Will it be... Frank Clark, Carl Loftus, Carlos Dunlap. Who is it going to be? Predict it for us. Who will lead the Chiefs in sacks this season? Five linebackers, no change from last time. Nick Bolton, Willie Gay, those are your two primary guys. Uh, Elijah Lee, Leo Chennault, they've been com competing at Sam linebacker. Lee may start the season, hopefully by midseason. Chennault's that guy, uh, the rookie out of Wisconsin. And then Darius Harris, who's a special teams ace and played fantastic at linebacker against the Packers. I think he showed plenty uh, to prove he could be a backup linebacker and contribute on special teams. So I think this one's pretty uh, easy. Maybe Jermaine Carter's on the roster bubble, bubble as another backer, but I don't think you need more than five because Spags is going to sit in nickel more often than not anyway. So these five guys make it. Let's go to corner. I had six last time, five this time. My sixth guy, uh, Chris Lammons, uh, we'll talk about in a sec. Legereus Sneed, Trent McDuffie, Rashad Fenton, no changes there. They're going to make the team. Joshua Williams, 
uh, and Jalen Watson, the two rookies, I think they're safe to make it as well. Obviously, McDuffie, a rookie, but as a first-round pick, he's obviously a lock. Uh, so these five players make it. The notable absence is Chris Lamons, and this would obviously be a bit risky to cut him as another team could pick him up, but if he clears waivers, uh, I think I would bring him back after Blake Bell goes to injured reserve and then Lamont's back on the team as a special teams contributor uh, as well. Uh, you could go Danny Shelton, cut him, bring him back if you're worried about Lamont's getting scooped, but uh, I opted to cut Chris Lamont's here and hopefully bring him back after the first day of cuts. Okay, um, safety. Justin Reed. Juan Thornhill, Brian Cook, Deion Bush. I, you know, I, I think it's these four guys. Nazi Johnson is a safety corner hybrid. He's on the bubble. I don't have him making it as a seventh-round pick. I think he'll be on the practice squad. Uh, depth chart, very straightforward. Thornhill and Reed will start. Bush and Cook will play a decent amount, especially on special teams, especially in Bush's case, one of the better special teams players in the NFL. Uh, he's kind of your Armani Watts replacement this year. So uh, that's kind of how it stands, pretty straightforward at the safety position. Maybe a fifth guy makes it, but I've got these four for now. And then special teams, the easiest one to figure out. Harrison Butker, the kicker. Tommy Townsend, the punter. James Winchester, the long snapper. No competitions during camp for any of these guys. So that will be your special teams unit. All right, there you go. My final 53-man roster projection before we find out tomorrow what things look like. Grade it for me. How'd I do? A, B, C, D, or F. Uh, if you don't think it's an A or B, let me know in the comments why and what changes you would make to the 53 because, you know, there's a couple of spots I, that I hesitated with, uh, you know, corner and uh, – offense and defensive line. Maybe there's one or two different changes there. But overall, I think uh, I'm going to be pretty close. We'll see how many I get right this year. All right, that's going to do it. Subscribe to the channel if you love the Chiefs and uh, if you want to stay in the loop with the latest news and rumors. Again, we'll have uh, the final roster tomorrow for you guys when that news drops. So subscribe and join us then. Until then, so long here on the Chiefs Report.